You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast brought to you by DraftKings, America's number one sports book app. Now joined by the great Jason Shear of Wildcat Authority. I am merely Mike Luke. By the way, back the A Ray already getting going here. One of our all time favorites. Back the freaking A all damn day. Back the A Ray, your beast. All right. Now we got a lot to get to on this show. First of all, Shear, what deals you got going on? I know you got something going on. Fill the folks in on what's up. Yeah, we got 60% off for uh, for the rest of the day. So 60% off an annual subscription. So jump in now. It's going back to normal price tomorrow. So All right, do it. Get in there. You know where to go. All right, now let's talk about Jed. We're going to talk a lot about Jed Fish and signing day. We're going to talk a little bit Arizona basketball as well and maybe some conference realignment news. But first, um, the thing that I really like about Jed Fish here, and you and I have talked about this quite a bit, is that there are some people that when you look at him, there's no box that there's no stone that is unturned, not left unturned with him. You watch him, you watch him in pressers. You can tell regardless of where this class is rated that he feels very, very good about what he got in this class. And what he continuously brings up is we want size. We need to get bigger. And everybody across the board here is if you're going to miss, if you're going to miss, you're going to miss with big players. Yeah, I would say, I mean, clearly Kevin Sumlin had no recruiting plan. Uh, Rich Rodriguez didn't have any real recruiting plan. So this is the first coach that Arizona's had in a while. that They know exactly what they want to do. Like Jed Fish, Matt Doherty, they do a great job of sitting down and saying, look, if we're going to miss, we're going to miss on a guy that's 6'6", you know, 300 pounds. Right. And so be it. And, and there's one thing is they have size at every position, even wide receiver. They go out and land bigger wide receivers. Linemen, they're all going to be big. Um, it's, it's just going to be a thing where they're going to be big, they're going to be athletic. And if they miss on that, that's fine. As opposed to missing on a guy that's five, six, one sixty. Speaking of big and athletic, let's talk about Braden Dorman first, um, committed early on in the class. We had Jed fish on earlier or last week. And he said that he thought that, um, he wouldn't trade his QB room for anyone. And he's talked, talk, we've talked a ton about Noah Fafita. Braden Dorman is kind of, that fits into that bigger drop back traditional passer mode that six, five has a gun for an arm. It's weird for a four star to kind of be overlooked a little bit, but it almost feels like that's what's happened because he's been committed so long and there's so much talent at that position. Yeah, he's definitely underlooked. I mean, it, or overlooked. It, it's it's a situation where he's legitimately one of the best quarterbacks in the class. Uh, mm -hmm. He went to the Polynesian Bowl. He was great there. Um, you know, the the twenty four seven analysts love him. Think he's great. He's got prototypical size. He's more mobile than he seems. You know, we we talk about Noah Fafita stepping right in when Jaden Delora leaves. I think that's going to be a very real quarterback competition between Dorman and Fafita. That is something, and, and really it's going to be one of those situations where Arizona has two really good options. But the idea that Dorman's just going to come in and wait around is is incorrect. He's he's absolutely going to compete to be a starter once Jaden Delora leaves. And the one position, too, that I don't worry about here at all under Jed Fish is quarterback and wide receiver. Now, you mentioned that as well. You look at the wide receiver position right now. Some of the guys that you were able to uh, you know, pull, you could pull a Utah com uh, commit with Wilson. You've got a guy in Jackson Holman who maybe not be the highest rated guy, but he's six foot three, put up a ton of numbers in California as well. And then you look at a Ma Malachi Riley who... I don't think I'm breaking any news right now was wasn't really on Arizona's radar. It was more of a Trey Spivey type situation. And then you look at Malachi Riley and he's rated higher than Trey Spivey. So you ended up with a better player there. All of these guys, six, two, six, three and above. It's it, it's unique for sure. And you can tell what the, the template there is pretty strong. Yeah, that, that room is fantastic. And like you mentioned, I'm, I'm not worrying about quarterback and I'm not worrying about wide receiver. I mean, Kevin Cummings knows what he's doing with recruiting and evaluation and all that. And and the, it'll be a position where they're clearly going to reload. And, and Riley has great size. Holman is, is is huge. You know, at first we thought he might be a tight end coming out of high school, but he's going to be a receiver. Um, they added a guy today where Jeff Fish couldn't announce it, but, um, you know, in, in Hyatt, Devin Hyatt, who's the brother of Jalen Hyatt, who was mm -hmm. the right. winner. And, and this kid is another, you know, 6'3", 200 pound wide receiver and and they have a a, a a size that they want for the outsides and then the slot guys are going to be a little more smaller like wilson but they still have the, that speed and that route running ability and in arizona is just loaded at that position 
And what I love too, now we can move to the now we can move to the offensive and defensive lines. Tylen Gonzalez is a guy where we're going to get talk about Polito here in a minute. But Tylen Gonzalez is a guy that Jed Fish always makes sure to bring up, no matter whether he's asked about it, no matter what the case may be. Kid out of Carlsbad, New Mexico. If you haven't heard of Carlsbad, New Mexico, that's not on you. Nobody's heard about it. But this is, I will say, this is the largest man in Carlsbad, New Mexico. And every single time Fish is at a presser, he makes a point to bring up Tylen Gonzalez. You can tell that he's got some pretty big expectations for him on the line. So here's the deal with this kid. So he doesn't really use social media. He uses Instagram once in a while. And I tried to get his highlights and I asked the coach and they said, no, we're not giving you highlights until he signs. And the day right. that he signed with Arizona, he released his highlights. And the reason why that was is because they think he's a stud. Tennessee offered, I think it was the week before signing day, and a right. couple other schools offered because they finally got a, a hold on his tape. They absolutely love him. I mean, he's listed as a defensive lineman in our – system he's an offensive lineman all the way great feet basketball player a lot of times basketball uh, correlates to offensive line because of the footwork they they think that he is a, a future star in the making right and now let's talk Raymond Polito right here because my big question I think on the offense to be quite frank is I love the uh I love everything that you got at the quarterback spot the running backs uh goes without saying wide receivers the tackle position worries me a little bit. Obviously, you got Jordan Morgan coming back, who Coach Fish talked about today. They want him to be a first-round pick. The other tackle position, though, does worry me a little bit. I mean, you've got Lange. You've got uh, – I would feel better about it if Polito was coming in early, but he's not. Um, that is still, to me, the one position on offense that I don't feel great about. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is we're going to see them assess the position in the spring. Polito won't be there. That really hurts his ability to, to start or play right away. Um, you know, I, I down the road, I think he'll get there. But in order to make that jump, you know, him being on a campus early would have helped. Lange will get that first look. I think they'll assess whether or not, you know, how confident they are in Lange. But you're going to see a lot of guys jump in the portal after spring football. And I've said it before, and, you know, like people say, oh, you know, there's not a lot of talent. And let's say Alabama's second string tackle jumps in the portal. That'll be just fine for Arizona. So, I mean, Arizona is keeping spots open, and I think one of them is is for offensive tackle in case they need one. And people need to understand too. I get people all the time and say, "What's up, Matthew? How you doing, my guy?" Um, uh, people talk all the time about, well, you know, like let's use Big Bill Norton for an example. By the way, I love that name, Big Bill Norton. But I don't care if he didn't play a ton at Georgia. Believe it or not, Arizona is not Georgia right now. If he can come in and he can be a guy that can get you seventy percent snaps, sixty percent, whatever the case may be. I'm all in on that because, again, while Arizona wants to get to Georgia, we also need to understand, though, too, that it's not at that point right now. Yeah, I mean, look, the, like Norton was a guy where we had projected as like a future NFL draft pick. He goes right. to Georgia. He doesn't play. He didn't play against what? Uh, a dynasty in the making. Right. You know, with the best defense, one of the best defenses we've seen. Oh, well, he comes to Arizona and you got to assume right away he's one of the better defensive linemen on the team. And, and it's an easy assumption to make. I'd be surprised if he's not. And. That's just where the difference in the program is. And, and, and if you can add a guy from Georgia who didn't play but still has that potential that the Georgia coaches like, the Georgia fans think highly of him, you take that guy every time. We're going to talk about my favorite player in the class here in a second. It's somebody that I've had multiple people in the program tell me that I'm not off on right now. Jason Shear isn't the only one with some connections behind the scenes from time to time. But have I told you about the four peaks, Shear? Please do. I can't get enough uh of it. Here's the deal. A lot of people might say, Mike, Four Peaks, that's the official brew of PHNX Sports. You're correct. It's also the name of the big men that we've dubbed for the U of A. But, you know, just like the U of A basketball makes things run in Tucson, here comes the Four Peaks. <laughs> Back the A-Ray. Here comes the ad revenue. Um, four Peaks, though, again, the official brew of PHNX Sports. Check it out. Again, uh, uh, great stuff in Tempe if you want to go root against the Scum Devils or come to our Tap and Bottle Watch parties as well. Again, check out the show notes and the link in the description, 21 and up. Enjoy responsibly and Tap and Bottle. Now, you might say to yourself, Mike, Tap and Bottle, where should I go to watch an away game from time to time? That's where you come. We got a new one fe February 11th. Love to see you up there. We'll have Four Peaks Brew there as well. Many people commenting here from Matthew to Kobe have been there as well. Love to see you all up there. Check it out. Tap and bottle. Love, uh, great time. All right. 
Here's my prediction right now for the guy who is going to be the biggest instant impact contributor in the entire class. Genesis Smith, safety out of Chandler. Um, I'm not beating up 24-7 because they're the best in the business. Um, but I do think they and the other services still have him a little bit underrated. Quite frankly, um, I think that he's feels more like a far, far star, a four star type guy. Jed Fish talked about him, how he's going to be your typical boundary safety. They think he can be 220 pounds at that safety spot right now. You got Isaiah Taylor, who's I think is pretty much locked in as a starter. Then I think Genesis Smith is going to have every, every opportunity there, Sheer, to even if he's not a starter, to be a guy that makes an instant impact. Yeah, we have him. Uh... You know, no offense taken. We have him as like as close to a four star without being a four star as you can be. Right, <laughs> he's like right. right there, and he's a guy that the coaching staff loves. I mean, I was told very early in the process and before he even committed that he was the the top safety on Arizona's board, and right. and I believe it. And when he committed, the staff was absolutely thrilled. He's a guy where they absolutely see him. If not starting, he's going to play a lot as a true freshman. And he'll eventually become a starter and, and be a starter for multiple years. He's a guy where you, when you look at the athleticism, the ability to cover, um, that's what he is. He can he could really cover the field, and and that's what they were kind of missing last season. And I think with uh, with Smith, he also figures into that bigger safety mold right there. A bigger player again. You're not bringing in a Smurf. You're not bringing in a Mike Luke or a Jason Shear. You're bringing in a guy who's six foot two, and like you said, could be two hundred and fifteen pounds, something like that. So that's, that to me is super exciting. Now I'm also curious to see though, with this linebacking core, because again, and no offense to anybody out there, but guys like Christian Young, uh, uh, Jerry Roberts to me, those lose, losing those guys is kind of addition by subtraction. I know they tried hard, but they were very limited. You now at that linebacker spot have Justin Flo, who we had your guy, Greg Biggins on that said that he was the hardest hitting uh, linebacker that he's seen in California in the last 10 years. You got him. You've got, excuse me, Jacob Manu who's not going to come off the field and Leviticus Sua and your guy Biggins, I thought made another good point. He said he would be very surprised if Leviticus Sua wasn't a multi-year captain. And Jed Fish essentially confirmed that by saying that he has every tangible and intangible that you want at that linebacker spot. The best word that I can use to describe the new linebackers is violent. I mean, yeah. Flo was violent in high school. Like, go if you haven't seen the famous clip of him picking up a kid and body slamming him, it went viral. Uh, go find it. You know, Daniel Hamuli, who didn't even mention, is violent. Like, he was a right. really good. And and Jacob Manu, we know what he can do. Leviticus Sua is probably the best of that bunch in coverage. Can really drop into coverage and almost plays like a a safety as well. This is a a very large upgrade at this position. You know, you take a look at, at a guy like Jay Roberts, don't want to knock him, great kid, but his reaction speed wasn't there. And, and his, his tackling often suffered. These guys react, um, they're violent, they're athletic. Yes, they have yet to reach their potential, but there's been different reasons why that hasn't happened. And, and Arizona thinks once they get the snaps, they'll they'll get to where they need to be. All right. Another reason that you should get on uh, Shears Wildcat Authority is you can hear my hot takes. Many of them are very wrong, but I think some of them are right. One thing that I did, I was going back and forth with a little bit on your board today, is that I do believe that um, you know a lot of people are still skeptical about the defense. Totally get it. I understand. You know what you see, but. I think you're going to see a major jump in the next couple or in the next year or so from so many of these freshmen that played this past year. Jacob Kungaika, Tai Tai Uyagulele in the middle. They acquitted themselves very well, all things considered. Then on the outside, you got to Deuce Davis. I wish you had another end right there um, that you could maybe pair with him. Maybe that turns out to be Deuce Lane. Um, but guys like that, an Isaiah Taylor again, uh, Takario Davis, Ephesians Prysock, everybody's talked about the new guys on offense last year. I think these guys are going to be problems here in the next year or two. Again, I'm not saying it's going to be desert swarm, but I think you're going to see a real upgrade. And I think a lot of these kids are going to hit. Yeah. I mean, these kids got thrown into the fire. I mean, a right. lot of them were playing at times that, you know, in games and situations where for the most part, they wouldn't be playing. And one of the reasons why the coaching staff did that is because they believe that the jump from last year to this upcoming season would be easier and would be bigger. Right. And, and they're confident in this group that those guys, one of the reasons why they weren't on their hands and knees begging Keon Bars to stay or a guy like that is because they believe that Ty Ty and Kangaika and 
uh, will be able to to step up. Like they believe that the the younger guys on this roster are ready to take the next step. And so really at every position, corner two. And so that's why, you know, this staff, is is there going to be some growing pains? Yes, but are you going to see an increase in athleticism, speed, and just overall ability? 100%. Who are we looking at? And now going back to the offensive side. Well, actually, first, let's say that you're listening to this and you're saying, man, Mike Luke and Jason Shear sound surprisingly smart. I'd like to go watch some U of A games, but you don't know where to go. Game time. That's where game time helps you. You can get tickets many times, 60% off for games, uh, concert venues, you name it. Game time has it. Check out the show notes in the link in the description. If you like me, the best way to support me is by buying your tickets through the link in the description and candle it. Not everybody has what they need during this time of the year, uh, especially kids in Phoenix. Candlein.org does a great job of getting uh, kids the supplies, the support, the necessities that they need. Check it out. Candlein.org, again, does a lot of great stuff for the uh, kids in uh, Arizona, and not everybody has it uh, well out there. It's uh, companies like Candlein that really try to help out. So again, check it out. Candlein.org. All right. Um, back to the receiver position for a second here. Who do we peg as the uh, that third receiver right now? Who's the leader in the clubhouse? Uh, Gary Bryant Jr. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a tease? Is uh, that a tease? Yeah. If Arizona lands him, he's starting, right? Right. And I think Arizona's in a, in a pretty good shape for him. It's not done yet. If they don't land him, I, I think it's pretty open. You know, the thing is, Kevin, Jed Fish has this very kind of strict roles with wide receivers. Like, I don't think Kevin Green is going to move to the outside. He's going to be right. spot, he'll back up Cowing. When Cowing leaves, Green's going to step right in. Maybe he gets more snaps this year than last year. So A.J. Jones would be that guy. Hyatt would be that guy. Riley would be that guy. And you'd have a competition on the outside. I, I think it'd be pretty open. If they get Gary Bryant, he's stepping right in and he's a starter. What are we expecting a commit or a, what are we expecting a decision to come down from Gary Bryant? Well, the thing with him is he has to finish the semester at USC, so he's in no rush whatsoever. Right. He's going to be at right. USC. He can't be anywhere in the spring. So basically, I mean, it could just be one day he wakes up and decides to do it. I don't I don't think there's kind of a, a strict timeline with him. All right, MLS Central makes a great point right here where he said the safety room beyond Isaiah Taylor is still somewhat proven, uh, unproven, kind of sketchy. I want to say one thing, though, about this. I didn't think that Jackson Turner uh, was bad by any means, but I think people also do need to remember, though, that there's a reason that a guy like that is at UNLV because the good players at Arizona, and again, this isn't to bash him, but the good players got s- snapped up pretty early, whether that was Dorian Singer, whether that was Christian Roland Wallace. Um, there's a reason, in my opinion, that a Jackson Turner is at UNLV. To me, guys like that are very much replaceable. Yeah, weird situation. I actually asked a coach what was going on, and they didn't know. I mean, you're talking a multi-year starter at a Pac-12 school, and he couldn't get offers. I mean, UNLV was really the most serious attention he got, which is kind of kind of interesting. And so I'm curious to see how he does. But UNLV was, was not a very good program last year. No. So. I'm not really sure what Jackson Turner is looking for with that move because he's starting. So that actually kind of lends credence to my my belief or what I ported that it was more mutual, I think, than than people originally thought. All right, I'm going to say this, and I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be breaking any uh, news right here. I'm ex- I'm interested to see DJ Warnell with a second year in the system. I know that he had you know he was kind of in and out of the lineup a little bit. I know a couple of the coaches on the staff are very big on him. He's a player that I would not forget at that safety spot. And for what it's worth, Gunnar Maldonado as well. Hello, Shelby. Um, Hi. He's a uh, Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, Gunnar Maldonado played much better towards the end of the season. Um, he wasn't very good for the majority of it, but he and Warnell have some potential there though. So it's not like those guys are lost causes though, either. I mean, look, it, it sounds bad, but if Arizona thought they were lost causes, they would have run them off. Right. <laughs> I mean, they, they ran off quite a few guys and they right. had, they, there was no conversation about Warnell and Maldonado not being on the team next year. So right. clearly they believe and Maldonado did play much better towards the end of the season. And, you know, maybe they think something clicks, maybe they move some things around, but um, they definitely see some sort of potential there. What can we do with this? I need to get fam Speedy Luke returning kicks this past year or this next year. I didn't like, no offense to Anthony Simpson, but I never felt that Anthony Simpson was ever going to go anywhere. Um, oh, by the way, Queen of Wildcat Authority sighting <laughs> right there. I like that back the A-Ray. It's good. But 
I'd love to see Speedy Luke or Brandon Johnson, one of these two guys, get in there and be able to return some kicks with some real gusto to it. Is that something that we're going to be able to see, or is this basically just fair catch and let's just get the offense the ball? Well, I mean, most of college football is just let's fair catch and get the offense the ball. I hate that, though. I do. I, I mean, the, the art of the kick return, for the most part, is gone in, in college football. I, I think that the biggest concern with Speedy was his size. You know, a year in the in the weight program, we'll see in the in the spring. That will be a good question for Jed. But I agree with you. I mean, he he should be the clear guy returning kicks this season. And even if you're fair catching it most of the time, the the fact that he would get a couple here and there opportunities and with his speed and, and playmaking ability, it just makes the most sense. Great. Biggins made another real, I thought made a really good point. He makes many good points, but um, he made a, uh, he made another good point too. He said the one thing though, that I will tell you that is if Jed fish is going to recruit smaller guys, you better believe that they're going to be have game breaking type speed. And you can say that across the board. You already talked about speedy Luke. Um, I think Brandon Johnson is a guy that we need to talk a little bit about here. Kid out of Palmdale, about 5'9", 180. But he's a guy that could absolutely um, win some big stuff in the California sprint meets this year. Um, that, to me, though, who, if you're going to be small, you better be able to break it to the house and not just be quick. Yeah, I, I mean, you take a look at Brandon Johnson. He he runs with power. Like, he may be 5'9", but he he runs with with major strength. He's not afraid of contact. He's very shifty. And like you said, he has track speed as well. And so if you're going to be a, a shorter guy, you better have speed and the ability to make people miss. And um, that's what you can pretty much always count on. We were talking about, yeah, Jed and the coaching staff want size. They're going to recruit bigger athletic guys. But if there's a smaller guy they take, there's a clear reason for it. And it, it's usually the speed. All right. Now we're going to talk a little bit. At, now we're going to move over to a little bit of Arizona basketball here. Now let's say that you're uh, you're saying to yourself, man, I, I wish I was more comfortable watching these U of A games. More furniture. MORfurniture.com. You, they can get you great furniture at a great price. They redid the entire PHNX studios. It looks fantastic. Check it out. More furniture. MORfurniture.com. Great stuff going on right there. Um, Arizona basketball, you got Oregon coming in uh, tomorrow. Um, this, this, I have no clue what to make of this game other than the fact that the spread is eight and a half points, which leads me to believe that Vegas thinks that Arizona is going to beat the snot out of Oregon. Um, but there are sometimes teams programs just kind of have a little bit of an edge for whatever reason. And, you know, Oregon is a very talented team, as we've seen. But this is also a game, though, that I believe Arizona at home needs to win this game. This is a game, I don't care if you win by one or 40, Arizona needs to win this game. Yeah, you know, I don't. we don't know what Oregon team is going to show up. You know, on the road, you assume the the average or the bad Oregon team will show up, but they play <laughs> well in McHale. They've lost like four out of six, or they've won four out of six in McHale. And so... We just don't know. Like, I was talking to the Oregon guy, Matt Prem. He's like, I don't know. They could lose by 20 or win by eight. And then I like, like, I don't know. And so, for me, I look at Arizona knew they had to beat Washington State because they lost to Washington State. Right. Oregon beating the crap out of Arizona gives me more confidence that Arizona is going to win this game. I, I just think Arizona is going to come out focused and, and win this game by double digits. What's I, I agree with you on there and Andre Veris. Um, no, I'm not taking Crete tomorrow. I'm uh, I'm actually picking um, picking Arizona in this game. But the one thing that Oregon is always going to think I think will at least for this Arizona team that can pose some problems is the length. You got Dante's back. You got Nate Biddle, who's pretty good, who's starting now in uh, inside. When you've got two legitimate peaks there to go against the U of A peaks, um, that you know that's something that they have going for them. But Again, though, if Arizona's turned that corner, I do believe this is a game against a very schizophrenic uh, Oregon team that they should be able to win. And quite frankly, if Arizona wins this game and uh, wins against Oregon State, you really kind of start controlling your own destiny for that number one seed out West. Yeah, I mean, these are games Arizona has to win at home. Arizona basically has to win out at home. They could probably afford a loss on the road. But if Arizona wins out at home and takes care of business and basically – I, I say this a lot in college football, beats the teams that they're supposed to beat. Like at UCLA, they're probably not supposed to win that game, right? right. And, and at USC will be a tough game too. But the other games, home against Utah, home against the Oregon schools, Arizona is going to be favored in each of those games. Win those games and you're a one seed. And e even you might be a one seed no matter what happens in that UCLA game at the end of the year. So these are games 
where Arizona has to win. And I think it has to win also to erase some doubt. Like, okay, Arizona went to Oregon and got run off the court. Is Oregon better than Arizona? We know they're not, but Arizona needs to prove that and, and take the casual fan out of the equation and, and beat Oregon tomorrow. Uh, you mentioned UCLA. Why is Mick Cronin such a turd? I thought you liked Mick Cronin. I do. I think Mick Cronin's a good coach, but man, I hate that. Every single game, they swallowed the whistle. We didn't get the pl- calls that we expected. Dude, I mean, at some point, you lost. Someone that knows him and is actually friends with him that I've talked to basically says that he has kind of a, a Napoleon complex where, like, he grew up in the Midwest. Like, he's got he, he's smaller. I know that sounds bad. So he's got to be, like, tough, you know? And, and right. So it's, like, I'm tough. I'm hard-edged and all that. And that's just kind of the way. Hard-edged? He could have played for Rich Rod. I, I was wondering if you pick it. By the way, Mike, Xavier just be Providence. So it'd be, you know. I'm allowing you to gloat a little bit. And that's a nice win for them as well without um, uh, it's a, uh, uh, without their big man that they lost for the season. And Tennessee's about to lose to Florida. So I know. Is that what Cody James Martin was messaging us about? Yeah, I have about four texts from him in the last five minutes. All right, Sheer. I've had multiple people ask, and I've confirmed you would root against Arizona, or you would root for Arizona, though, against Xavier if a Final Four trip was on the line, correct? You can ask Shelby this. There is no hesitation. I would root for Arizona over anyone, anyone, See, including Sean Miller, Xavier. That is backing the A to the fullest right there. I like it. I like it. Um, now, with the one thing about it, though, Arizona, we need to talk about their uh, their wins right now. And KB Thiel uh, uh, mentioned this point, <laughs> mentioned this again. Arizona, um, winner of Arizona, UCLA, and Vegas is getting the one seed. I don't understand though why, and this drove me up a wall. But Jay Bill is saying this. Well, you can't have two. T- you can't have Arizona and UCLA as a one seed. Let me give you a situation here. Let's say Arizona wins out until the Pac-12 championship game, and they lose to UCLA. UCLA wins out with the one exception of Arizona. Why in the world wouldn't they both have be number one seeds? UCLA wouldn't because they just don't have enough good wins. That's fair. That's fair. Arizona, in that it's it basically comes down to UCLA not having enough good wins. When you when you line it up, yeah, they don't have a lot of losses, but when you're comparing them, yeah, good wins other teams, they they just don't have them. All right, Andre Veras says. By the way, you owe me for Andre Veras's membership right there, Sheer. He says, uh, does Sheer have a, a, a Thierry Darlin update? I talked to him this morning. I said, how are you? He said, good. That was it. That's all we talked about. I have <laughs> I don't know if we went to bed or what. It's G League or Arizona. I mean, I, right. I don't think he's going anywhere else, and and that's going to be something where it's going to go back and forth probably. All right, we need to talk about conference realignment here in a second, but Mountain Mike's Pizza first. You don't need pizza realignment. If you got something that works, don't uh, uh, don't break it. Mountain Mike's Pizza, Oracle and Wetmore, great food, great TV setup, great drinks. You name it, they got it. Again, Oracle and Wetmore, many times they're at the Tap and Bottle watch parties as well. Maybe I'll try to get them there for February 11th. So, again, Mountain Mike's Pizza. All right. Uh, now, Jan- John, Ken- Jan Canzano. John Canzano, he doesn't know anything he's talking about with conference realignment. He's been all over the place. But there are mo- there are some guys there that I that I trust, you know, at least their opinions. Dennis Dodd, um, Hourland, Marchon, you mentioned this to me earlier via text that they're now a little bit concerned about the future of the Pac-12. What exactly do you make of that there, Jason Shearer? Not Dennis Dodd, the other two. The the longer it goes, the worse it is. I mean, because uh, even the the Pac-12 honks said that a deal was going to be done and now they're stepping back and like, well now it's march right before it was august and, and before so it was august 6th right so the longer it goes now you start to think okay something's something's fishy i think the stuff with comcast or whatever it is with the hidden money that probably hurt because now you got to look at the value and all that of the conference and uh, we said this consistently no one is overpaying for anything amazon espn no matter who it is they're not overpaying they don't need to so right. if the Pac-12 is waiting for that to happen, it's not going to happen. And they're going to have to take a scenario that schools probably don't want. The problem is, it, 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 are those schools going to agree to it? And so it's it's if this isn't done in a month or two, it gets real messy. Here's my case. And we got Dave Hickey coming on Friday at 1030. That's a plug right there. Um, send me your questions. I'm going to make the case to Dave Hickey, though, as to why the Big 12 is better. And to me, it's very simple. Um 
that you got, it's the best basketball conference in the nation by a mile. It's not even close. There's no close second. It's just, and again, I get that football pays the bills, but at the end of the day, TCU was in the national title game. Now you could say they got blown out by Georgia. That's fair, but they also beat Michigan to get there as well. I don't look at the, the big 12 football and pac 12 football without the LA schools and say, Oh, there's a great chasm right there. That to me is the best case. Plus we're a basketball city. That's why I support a move to the big 12. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's a basketball city and the basketball, it's the best of the conference or the best in the country. I mean, football it's, I'm just, I'll be honest, I get bored really quickly and I'm just bored. Like it's like, like you look at like college basketball and Arizona's rival now is Oregon and then who? Well, because aren't we the essentially the Mountain West at that point then without the LA schools? And I hate saying that, but it Arizona and Oregon are the only two schools you need to take seriously. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's that's one hundred percent it. Arizona will literally have a chance. It'll be yeah, it'll be like Gonzaga, basically. Maybe Tommy Lloyd wants that. I don't know. All right. We'll, we'll find out. But again, all right. Going to sign off here, Sheer. But again, tell them where to find all the good deals right now. Wildcatauthority.com for another three hours. We have a deal for 60% off an annual subscription. So uh, so make sure you, you take advantage now, right now. And make sure you listen to Shelby and I of the Wildcat Scoop podcast. The, I like the queen of Wildcat Authority. I like that. The, back oh, the wow. A-Ray coming. You need to steal that. I am. We're gonna. That's gonna be our sign on today. The queen of joy. Yes, that's very good. Back the A Ray. Your your beast. Everybody on there. Really appreciate all your comments. We will be back with you. Well, I'll be back with you tomorrow. Then we got the best AD in the country, Dave Hickey, coming up right there. My guy, Shear's guy, everybody's guy. We'll be back with you uh, for Jason Shear. I'm Mike Luke. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. Mm-hmm.